So what's chapter two about? Mapping, right? Why are we mapping? We want to really find out what's going on. And we also want to have some, some control over our lives. We, want to, we don't want to guess or just make up stories about this. Oh, I think this, or I made this up. Why? Because whatever. We want to map it. What's the key to mapping? Looking carefully. That's the key to looking careful, especially when we're talking about astronomy, obviously angles. So we have now, we're putting the last piece in, and it's complicated. So you're not going to be, um, if you overthink this, you will realize that it's complicated. You're not going to feel comfortable with that entirely uh, right, right now. You will understand when we're done here the questions and the puzzles and the clues a bit that we're leading into in chapter three. What did you find out when you map things carefully? And then in chapter four, then we answer a bit of, oh, what's going on to make me see that? So what we see in our sky, why? I mean, what do we see? Well, what we see depends on where we are on Earth latitude, longitude, motions, all these motions. And we look out, we're gonna map things. And people spend a lot of time trying to figure out what's really going on, all they had with these maps. So let's uh, take a peek over here, set the sails. And um, come back to that in a moment. All right, so. Angles, map your sky, azimuth, altitude, cardinal points, all that stuff. Uh, map Earth, latitude, longitude, got that. And now we're going to map stars, galaxies now, but not until 100 years ago did we even know there were galaxies, you know that. Any specific location, oh, not on Earth, right? So let me get rid of that. Not on Earth but on our map of the stars. So we're gonna say on celestial sphere map. And I would call it, so you could call it a location on the map. Uh, location on Earth makes sense. Latitude, longitude, that's where you are on Earth. Um, but it's kind of more a direction Like you could say, and just thinking about those words kind of helps you think about it. Location in your sky, well, is really kind of a direction. I'm looking in that direction. Things might move past it, but I'm looking in that direction, right? So if I look in that direction, I can call it a location. I can call it an address. What's the address? Oh, azimuth altitude. That's the address. What's the address on Earth? Latitude, longitude, right? What's the address on this map? What is this map? Let's talk about that. Okay, we're gonna set this up. So let me help you to understand it a bit. And this is fine. This is all you need, okay? Um, so we are going to map these stars. This is called the, oh, I've never done this before actually. I don't know why when I was writing it. Sorry, I couldn't help calling it the Celestia Sphere map. I know my, my name is Italian and it's uh, from skies, heavens, whatever. But it's the Celestial Celestial map. And there are 11 ideas and terms that you need to know. So it's kind of nice to go, okay, that's what I got to know. Um, we're going to map stars, galaxies in parentheses, because how long ago do we know, learn about galaxies? Only 100 years, right? So, but they end up on the map now, not in the past. Planets, moon, sun, we're gonna talk about this. There's a lot of really good realizations, okay? Uh, we're gonna show where they are compared with each other. That was huge, that changed the game, we're gonna see. When? Uh, 500 years ago, 400 years ago. Or, you know, change the game. Uh, so recall the fixed stars 
they move together, right? They write the, remember chapter one, they, they move together in patterns. So you can make up your own patterns, but they're still, they still move together. And so they're called fixed because they're, they do move, but they move together. Um, so they're gonna have the same, so this one, Red is here, green is here. If they move together, they still have the same address or location relative to each other. So we give them an address, and if I give this an address, it's got an address, and they don't change. Notice that on Earth, you can be wherever you are. You're, as Earth moves in spinning and orbiting, your address stays the same if you stay in one place. Your latitude and longitude stays the same. So too, the stars move together, but each of them has an address, namely declination and right ascension. We're gonna to get to that. So we, we're gonna, we're talk, think of this as a map. Like, like I would say, be careful with YouTube and even some books. Um, I, I think there's a way that people talk about this that's very misleading. It makes sense to them, you know, when you know something, it's like, what, that made sense. I hope this makes sense. So let's talk about it. But the fixed stars move together, the wanderers change what star they are in front of. And they were magical powers. Who were they? How can you remember the wanderers easily? Well, maybe not so easily if you don't speak Spanish or Italian, you know, Latin. Uh, you do the days of the week, right? So moon and sun, which are different kind of things, and then the five naked eye planets, and now we'd say Earth, but when we're looking from Earth, we don't see it wandering, and of course Uranus and Neptune, and there's Pluto out there too, which we'll talk about, and some other things, but they were called the wanderers, remember the seven days of the week, etc., and we know who they are. So what's going on? This is part of the puzzle. And so you get to this place of understanding why people wondered, what is going on? What's happening? This is what they saw. And they did a really good job mapping it out, but they didn't have telescopes and stuff. So it's called the celestial sphere map. Let me emphasize what I mean by a map. This won't be too bad. I'll do it in two videos just to kind of break, just to break it up. Here's what I mean. This is a planetarium, and the seating is such that this is soon to be our old planetarium since we're getting a new building. You know, people like that. And think about it if I draw a seating chart on a flat piece of paper, that would be my map of where people are sitting. Okay, so check it out. Imagine that, and then I'll show you what I'm gonna do here. So if people are sitting there, I can make a seating chart, and I could mark it. I could mark it with Marcus. I could mark it with Ricky. Mark it with Maria. Whatever, you know? And notice that there all be dots on this on this map. In reality, of course, some of them are closer in the front row and some of them farther away. I could have two dots, one in the front row and one in the back, and they're really, they look close together, but I know that the, this map doesn't show me distances. Think of that and think of it as though we have, and I think this is the best way that, that I've come up with that, that, to think of this. Some people talk about celestial sphere like it's way out there. You know, and, and I'd rather think of it, think of it as though we've got a window, a spherical window around Earth through which we look and we put dry erase pen marks, right? So we're marking our window. And if you think of it that way, you're looking from Earth. Now, again, don't think too far ahead. Don't think too far ahead because you would need more practice than you're getting in this class. Like, usually it'd be like in an astronomy lab. But we're gonna, we're gonna do that. And if you really wanted to work with it, you'd get a really cool one. 
it's a little comp. This one's a little easier to see for this, but then it, there's a lot going on. Things are moving, and tilted, and it comes apart. And, oh, goodness. But you get used to it like anything. Like anything, you gotta spend some time with it. So we're not spending that time, so you're not gonna get super used to it, okay? So give yourself a little break, but do know these 11 terms, so know this. All right, so think of it as follows. Here today, or today, in this video, we're gonna do these six terms. Celestial sphere map. That's the globe, we'll talk about that. The North Celestial Pole, the South Celestial Pole, the Celestial Equator, right? And that's written out in your text. And then declination and right ascension. A little bit tricky, but we're gonna keep it simple. And that's gonna tell you, this is, instead of latitude and longitude, like on Earth, we're gonna use declination and right ascension. That usually confuses people a little bit. If you played with it, some, then you'd have to go outside. You'd have to spend some time doing this as a hobby for maybe a couple years, few years, just on the side, but still, it'd take a while to sink in, I think. Okay, so let's talk about it. It won't be too, too long. I've, see that, I, I drew it, so there we are. We're on Earth and we're looking out. That's a, supposed to be a person. I, I thought it was fun. Uh, and we're spinning around and we're ancient shepherds and we don't know planets or anything except moving dots and we don't know how far away things are. We don't know if their planets are AUs away. Stars are light years away in our galaxy, light years away, right? The light year is 63,000 AUs, right? 1,500 times farther than Pluto. About, just, I know, super rough. Way out there, stars. And then beyond the stars are galaxies. We know this from chapter zero, but, but we're just looking out and we're just saying what we see. That's all we're doing is mapping it. We're seeing things move together and then we're, we're gonna keep track of it. What seasons do I see this? At nighttime, oh, these stars are out. It must be this season. Oh, where's moon, where's sun? And we do that by creating map. And this is our map. So let's come over here and get those terms down. What else was I going to say? I think that's it. So think of it this way. This is Earth. I call that a side view. This I call a top view, and you'll make that distinction. It doesn't matter how you draw it. But here is kind of better because here's North Pole, here's South Pole. And we talked in the last video about where you are on Earth, if that's what you see. Again, let's we'll keep this kind of simple. And the idea of the celestial sphere map, I add the word map because it's, it's a map, right? And so it's like you're looking through that window and creating, if you think about that, if you look through a window and you say, there's a tree and there's a car, some of them are closer, there's a building far away, there's a close tree, a far tree, a dog or whatever, and you, you make that map on your window that you're looking through, as I described in the book, but think of it that way. The actual things are way out here, but you're mapping it. It would be hard to do because everything's moving. It's like, ah, don't worry about that. So what we've got, let me put my window up. Here's my window. I'm gonna make it kind of nice. There is no shape, there is no celestial sphere. Here's the point. In antiquity, and for a long time, people looked at it, they actually thought that Earth wasn't moving. Now remember I talked with you about flat Earth. The people that were really looking at this stuff scholars learned it so thousands of years ago, they knew Earth was not flat. So they had this idea of things going around Earth, like a literal thing, the celestial sphere, the sphere of the heavens, right? That's reasonable. 
In fact, if you look up and you can imagine like, well, maybe there's just this shell and then there's holes and there's fire out here and it's shining through the holes. People wondered about that. It's reasonable. They didn't know about light years or what stars were or any of that stuff. Right? It took quite a while. I mean, really understanding stars started you know, more around 1900. So much started around uh, 1900 after we had figured out electricity and magnetism equipment. Anyway, the idea of a real celestial sphere uh, was in play for a long time. Okay, there, there's a real, that's where there are these dots. And then the ones that can move around, oh man, those, those are gods. Or, that's not a dumb thought, it's just we've gone way past that. So, to transition into a modern view, we're going to draw this, and that's why I call it a map. Back in antiquity, they just they thought it really kind of was the was the deal. We're actually out there. But if you fly a rocket, you're not going to run into the wall of the celestial sphere. People are really trying to figure out their place in the cosmos, the universe, etc. Good old circle again. That's not real. It's just a window. It's a window through which we look. Now, in this direction, and we just did this, so, you know, I try to set you up, you know, at her zenith, or on her horizon, or wherever, in that direction, we know that there's a star, isn't there? Tie the colors in. So in that direction, way, way out there, what's the name of that star? Not exactly over there, well, very close and getting closer even. But uh, that is Polaris, the North Star. A pair of magnitude what? Come on, you know, review all those apparent magnitudes in the book. Two, distance, I'll put in a parenthesis if I don't expect you to remember this. We just looked it up. What was it? Well, yeah, and again, you. New equipment, new satellites, that's always being taken. So don't take this as absolute because we continue to explore and find out more. Um, I don't know, I think you could say 400 light years, 434 light years. So fairly close in our galaxy, but the light you're seeing has been traveling for 400, over 400 years, crazy. Anyway, where does it go on our map? And I can look at that map, literally use that map. It goes right here. And what's that location on the map? That is the North Celestial Pole above Earth's North Pole. Makes sense, right? And this is naked eye. Okay, where do you think the South Celestial Pole is. Uh, and there can be a lot of stuff. If you keep going through the universe, there's a lot of stuff there. But this is on the map, the South Celestial Pole, the direction to look. And if you keep going, there is no naked eye object. So a little, a little more difficult to navigate the seas when you go past this point and you've got no Polaris. And so you might end up places you didn't expect to be. And so navigation was not so easy, right? So that's where the celestial, but there is a Southern Cross and it orbits around and you orient it. But when people, uh, when Europeans or whomever were up here and then when they came down here, they saw star patterns they hadn't seen. Talk a little bit about that, so make up names for them. They didn't even know that they existed. Right? Of course, these folks knew they existed. That was, that was their jam. Okay, so that's that. We, wow, we got celestial sphere. That's what this whole thing is, right? One, two, three. Not so bad. Where do you think the celestial equator is? 
Uh, I could draw it fancy, but I'm not going to. So I'm going to draw the celestial equator. I'll show it to you. It's this. It's this ring, and any stars or anything, remember, not on. So we're, we're letting go of that little ancient thinking that they're on a celestial sphere, but through it, through the window map, what can you, I can see that star right there, that one. These are going to be located that way along that line. But it is quite tricky to try to piece this together. Yeah, again, you can do it, but you're not going to do it right away. So this right here, again, I can draw it fancy, but this, of course, is the celestial equator. And I, I'll wait till the next video to show you what you can find there. It's kind of cool. So the idea here is, see, I've got one, two, three, four terms. I just have two more for this video. And that is declination and right ascension. Okay, and again, don't overthink this. Latitude, how far north or south of the equator. Longitude, give me a uh, London, Greenwich. How far east or west from the prime meridian? That's how people map out, map this out. Started making, they use that. And then they're trying, they were confused. It was hard, it was tricky, right? Well, we do the same thing on this, right? We do it on Earth, but we also do it on this map. How far north or south of the celestial equator, and by north, I mean on this, and how far around, I don't even know if I put it in the book, but it's going around from the point where sun is on the vernal or spring equinox. I would start my year there. I don't really know. It's kind of funny. In my calendar. Uh, so that's what those two things are. They just tell you. And remember, while things move, they keep their same address. While you move, you keep your same latitude and longitude if you're standing still. Right? You're moving. It doesn't feel like it. But you keep your same latitude and longitude. As it appears, the sky moves. Look, you're moving. You look like you're moving. There you go. Oh, look. You're rising in the east, setting in the west. So who's moving? It doesn't feel like we're moving. So you get that, right? You get that. Anyway, the, their location relative to each other, this one's always next to that one, this one's over here, and how many fists, how many thumbs, are they apart? That's how you do it, right? Except you try to, once you start using sticks, you might do a little better job. And so, for example, check this out. There could be star A, I got star A out there, you can see it, right? And it really, it's light years away, as you know. But on my map, and, and where, that's the other hard part, where it is in your sky, at the altitude, when you see it, then you start seeing that's complicated. We're not going there. Just do it from here, just keep it simple. Good. Ah, oh, there it is. The physical thing is light years away. Who knows how many? Hundred, thousand, whatever. With a telescope, you can see more and more distant things. But I can map it. I can put it on the map. And people have been doing this for thousands of years. So this is star A on celestial sphere map. And star B is right next to it, right? But is it? Not necessarily, right? Because who knows? I, I can make star B come in here, whatever, right? There's star B. Um, and then it looks like it's right next to it. Because on the map, it's here. But in space, in reality, it's here. So they look close together, as we've talked about many times. But in fact, they're physically far apart. So this is 
star B on the map. And that's true all over. So you've got this star physically way out there, but on the map it has a location. Ah. And even if you spin that map, you spin it, any pick a dot, it stays in that same place on this map. That's it. That's all you really need to know. It, it, could, it could be close together. I don't know. There's whatever. They can appear farther apart than those, but physically actually be closer together. So there's where it is on the map. In galaxies, well, they didn't know them, but now we do, so we still use the map. And galaxies, of course, are farther out than the stars we see at night. The stars we see at night are close stars. Galaxies are way up there. Nonetheless, they have a location. I mean, you might go, hey, that galaxy's right next to this star. No, you know the difference. That galaxy's millions of light years. Super close galaxy would be a tenth of a, a million light years. But millions of light years. And then uh, billions of light years for distant galaxies. So whatever. But they still have a place on the map. And you get groups of galaxies. And you have stars. So we need some telescopes up in here. But they've all got a location. I hope that makes sense. Uh, you know, you might have a cluster of galaxies. Who knows? Way out here. Way out here. Cluster of galaxies. And then you've got some close stars in our in our uh, galaxy. And then you got much closer planets. Planets. So each location has an amount north or south of the celestial equator, mapping it the same way. And we do it as an angle from zero degrees to plus 90 and zero to minus 90, right? Zero, oops, zero to plus 90, declination we call it. Why? Because we're just trying to make it hard and sound fancy. Uh, plus 90, zero, minus 90. So there's a, but, Lines of equal amount north or south all have the same declination, just like latitude. Ooh. Ah, I gave it away. Just like what? So we could have a color shot to green. This would all be one declination. This would all be another declination. Another declination another declination. These all have the same declination. Anything on there, stars, galaxies, whatever, those are declination. And so Polaris has a declination. Now you can write dec, D-E-C, or sometimes, this is a Greek D or delta, lowercase delta. So you might see that. All it means is that, and all is, for now, all you need to know is that's telling me where it is compared to the other stars, but I can't really figure that out because I haven't played with it enough. So that, and that's how people do it. That's all you need to know. But this has a deck, I'll write deck, of plus 90 degrees. Celestial sphere has a deck of zero degrees. Celestial, South Celestial Pole has a deck of minus 90 degrees. So it tells you here. And again, what does that mean when I step outside? And well, it depends if it's May or if it's January or if it's that, you're not gonna piece that together, not in this amount of time. If you can, I'm really mad because I certainly couldn't do it like that. And then what's the other one? So let's, can you read that? Is that, is that cool? Can you get that in there? All right, looks like you're getting it. Uh, and we're still running, yay, all right. So, declination is the amount in degrees north or south celestial equator. Like what? Like what? Like what? Like latitude. 
on Earth. So latitude on Earth. Right ascension is the amount around. So if you tell me that, I don't, you still don't know what you know which one. So I got to tell you how much around. And that's called right ascension. You don't have to worry about. I kind of try to tell you why you might call it right ascension in the book, but you can skip that. Just whatever. It's the amount around. How do you do it? How do you do the details? Uh, let it go for now, or or no. Uh, but we do it in hours. Zero. You know, all the way up to we can do hours and minutes of that. One hour, 23 hours, back to 24 hours, or zero. Why? Because the sky spins around us in 24 hours. Oops, it spins the other way. Why does the sky spin around us in 24 hours? Because we're spinning around. We spin which way? Eastward. The sky appears to spin which way? Westward. Rising the east, but heads west. Okay, now I'm cheating a little bit. But I think you still appreciate the puzzle that our ancestors had to deal with and what people were trying to figure out. Okay, so everything has a, a declination and a right ascension. Everything's got an address, whether it be a galaxy, stars, even planets, moon, and sun. And here's what leads us into the next one. And I think I've touched all the points planets moon and sun as seen from earth still not sure what's going on around still thinking that everything revolves around us um, planets sun and earth change what stars they're near so write this down planets Sun. What did I say? Planets, sun, and moon. Com comets, too. But what? Planets, sun, and moon change what stars they're near, so they change their address. A fancy way of saying that is they change their what? Declination and right ascension. Shorthand, shorthand, or that. That's like what? The amount around is like? Ah, uh, yes. It's like the amount around. It's like these guys. Like longitude. On Earth. And now we pulled it together. And the, the irony is now when you know more, in some ways, you're confused more because, like, well, when's it? What, what is going on exactly? That's chapter three and four. You want to be at that place, like, wow. So I watch this, and I'm trying to figure out what is going on that I see this. I'm trying to keep track of it. Address by declination, right ascension. Cool. There's an easier way to break up the sky, and we'll do that next time. Pick stars. Keep the same. Uh, declination, right ascension. Galaxies keep the same declination, right ascension. The wanderers, the wanderers change. They must be gone.